Making stringing inlay is really not all that difficult, but it does take a bit of finesse. To start with, I have the jig that I've made to be able to cut the strings in very straight lines without wasting a lot of material. The way I made it is I took a 2x4, routed a groove into it that I put the ledger that fits against my bench and in the vise. The width of this half inch plywood is equal to the width of the 2x4 plus the thickness of my cutting gauge that rest rides into this groove to keep everything parallel and perpendicular. Then on the back side I have another piece of half inch plywood glued against that with a spacer block to ensure that over time this stays nice and tight and snug and in square. I have a small ledger piece here that is a, it's about a quarter of an inch wide strip. I have something to back it up against. It's not just relying on this fence, I can hold it tight against this strip of wood here. The opposite side, I have another piece of the same thickness of wood glued down on the surface, and that's just so that my beam is going to rest on both pieces equally. For the marking gauge itself, I use not a pin type, but one with a blade that's actually going to slice the fibers. So I've cut some strings on, or some material to thickness on the bandsaw. I'm looking for a final of about 040. I want a little bit wider than my groove is going to be so that it fits snugly. That allows me also to, on the back side, just take a card scraper if it's a little bit uneven. I have enough material to take the rough edges you can hear how rough this is. Get it a little bit smoother. Put the jointed edge against the guide. I have the distance for the blade is set to be just over a sixteenth of an inch, about three thirty seconds of an inch, a little bit more. That's about perfect because I, my groove is going to be a sixteenth of an inch deep and I want it to come up above that by just a little bit. I'll sand off and shave off what's excess, but uh, if I tried to make it perfectly flush with it, uh, I might actually be inside of that groove rather than flush with the top. I want to make sure everything can be fine in the end. And cutting this, you just make a couple of light scores usually two or three passes is enough to cut all the way through. You don't need a lot of pressure, just enough to cut through it. And a couple of scores is better than trying to go through on all one pass. No waste pretty much at all out of this piece. I can get a lot of uh, strings out of this one piece. And I'll cut several of those for my project. I need like 32 little short pieces of stringing. Then I have this block that I made. It's simply a card scraper that I've cut off at an angle on one end. And then a, a block of scrap wood. I've cut an angle across the face with a very fine th kerf that this blade will sit into. This is cut at about a 45 degree angle. Then there's a notch out of the center that I'll be pulling the stringing through. The edge of the card scraper is sharpened just like you do a card scraper normally. So the very end. This fits into the groove like so. You're gonna have a small gap left between the wood and the blade. So you want to take, make sure that the angle is towards the way that you're pulling out, otherwise it's going to force this blade back as you cut. You just line up one side of the string with the outer edge of the block and just pull this through a couple of times. And after a couple of pulls through, that'll create a beveled edge on this lower edge, enough to sink into 
the groove that you make and um, allow for a tight fit once that reaches the width of your groove. Just two or three passes through here should be sufficient. The next thing that you need for stringing inlay is a straight line cutter. Now, there are a number of straight line cutters out there um, because my inlay is in the middle of a field and not parallel with an edge. I decided I'd make my own straight line cutter. I'm using one of the Lee Nielsen straight line cutter blades that uh, this one is a 0.041 straight cutter blade. It's basically a little U-shaped blade that sits um, behind the screw and I have it set against a wood block that I run against a fence in the middle of the field to ensure I get a straight line. So that's one method. To make this straight line block, it's really quite simple. That is just a block of wood that's maybe four inches wide, three to four inches wide is about right for a hand. It has a mortise routed into the center of it for um, holding the beam. The beam itself, I, you can hand make one of these quite easily. I used my um, hand plane and a jig that I made, planed it down to a thickness that fits into the fence really well all the way through. The end of this is cut square. The beam you want also quarter sawn, but going as straight across as possible. So you want the ray fleck, for example, on this oak on the side of the beam. It's going to ensure that this beam stays straight as an arrow uh, for, uh, for its whole life. The other option would be to go with the Veritas inline tools. Now I do have here a couple of the 0.032 tools. The first one is the template groove cutter. The groove cutter has a hooked end and a very, very tiny V-shaped blade um, when you're looking at the profile from straight on view. The way that you use this tool is that you would push it in to score and then pull back to clean out the groove. Once you have your groove cut, you would go over to the inlay chisel that's made the same thickness as the grooving cutter. So both of these are 0.032. You can get them in 041 or 0.63, 16 of an inch, basically. The inlay chisel is used to clean out the groove, but also to get down into the very end of a point where maybe your cutter isn't gonna get it cut quite as cleanly as it needs to like if it's butting up against a corner or something like that and you want a really square corner. So the design that I'm using is pretty much a, is a, for a bicycle wheel and I'm gonna be doing the lacing for the spokes. The lacing crosses each other, so I need to figure out which ones are behind and which ones should be to the front so that my second cut is going to be overlapping the other. You don't mark all of your grooves first. You're going to have to, I need to cut one of the straight lines and then the overlapping line would be cut second. I have my straight line cutter and this is um, the opposing block that's cut to the same thickness as my straight line cutter. I'll use that as a guide to line up against the line that I t intend to cut. And if I just put a slight mark in, I can see on either side just where that cutter is going to come. Looks like it's splicing right where I need it on the line. And because it's beveled on both sides, I'm going to be pulling each direction across the grain. Light strokes to begin with, I don't want to be pushing the fibers away. It's just like when you use a plane, you're going to start out with a lighter stroke to begin with. I also want to make sure that my material is not going to shift on me. Clamp this into place. Make sure it's not going anywhere the way I want it to. A 
Black on the opposite side helps me to uh, score the lines right. Once I have those lines scored, I can remove this other block because it'll follow in my scoring line. Light score marks to start. Come through with the chisel and clean out the extra material. I've already cut my inlay. I've beveled the edge so that it'll lie nicely into the groove. Each of my spokes, I need about a four inch piece. That'll do more than enough. I'm gonna start it at the inside edge and let it extend out past the outside and then I'll cut it to the exact length inside of this groove that I need. If I had already had that in place, then I'd wanna make sure that that string is exactly the length that I'm after. So I'll cut a couple off at four inches. And right now I'm doing just four grooves, so I'll just cut four pieces so that I don't lose track of where my parts are. Now it's a matter of taking a look at the end and making sure I'm using the correct chamfered edge a little bit thinner on this edge than on this edge up here. The grain on the, on the uh, inlay goes from the bottom edge up towards the top edge. If I were to plane this off this direction, I'd be lifting each of these fibers and I'd risk the breakout of the end fibers here. Don't want to do that, so I want to make sure that when I plane, I go from I'll be pushing against the pushing against those fibers. So in order to make sure that I do this correctly, I'm going to put the outside edge lower and the inside edge to the top of the grain line the way that it runs. That way I know I can always plane from or chisel it down, pare it down from the outside edge to the inside. Just a little bit on this edge, the, the bottom edge of the piece that's going to go in. Doesn't take much. And again, I'll start to ensure that I have the back end at least as far as I need it. You can see how this just lies right night into that groove quite nicely. And that's bottomed out. I have it just a little bit proud and I'll go around and lay the other four pieces in. And once the glue has set, I can shave these down a little bit closer to the surface so that I can put my guide again on it. And when I bring my uh, edge cutter across, I won't have this big ridge to go over. I do need to make sure that when I do this that I'm going with the correct grain and not lifting things. And that should be okay. I want to use the back side of the chisel. Once I get closer to the wood I'll be resting the chisel, uh, this point of the chisel, apex of the chisels against the wood and lifting this a little bit so that I don't gouge into my wood even though I'm going to be sanding everything down later. Now this isn't my final surface. I will be sanding this all down and it'll be really nice and flush and you'll see that I get a good fit once I'm done. The Veritas inlay tools um, don't require a beam to go across, but they do require a straight edge for a straight line. You can use these as a curve in the middle of a field um, or for following any kind of a template that you might have. For this I can use just the 
a straight edge like a ruler to go along. That works fine. And this, it's actually much easier to line up. I can set my guide on the line, much like you would do a knife edge. Bringing the guide right up to it. And with this tool you push. I've scored a couple of times uh, because that gives me a good solid line to find, follow before I start doing the pull. It'll separate the fibers of the wood up on the surface without having any real tear out. What you're seeing over here is some glue mess, so it's not really tear out. And getting across these previous ones is a little bit of a trick. It's also easier to start at a precise location compared to the other guide. Okay, I think you can see where I have a pretty good score line established now. Uh, nice groove. The chisel will be used to clear out um, the material in between the two score lines. A little gentle scraping against these, sometimes cutting backwards again. It's required. There we go. And I'm aiming for a depth of about a sixteenth of an inch, almost down to the depth that I have here for these inlays. This vaulted maple has kind of a a little bit of a challenge in that I have some harder areas and softer areas to deal with. <clears throat> and the chisel I find is easiest to use backwards so that I'm pushing uh, kind of like a plain edge in the groove. That's just to clean everything out, be being really careful where I already have the inlay glued in. I'm not getting a whole lot out, but you do want a clean channel to be able to insert the um, stringing. Yeah, that's a pretty nice clean line. And the stringing is inserted as with the uh, previous where I have an edge that's been beveled. And I'll cut off a length that's longer than what I need in this case. And of course this stringing is even narrower than the other that I was using. This one is uh, 0.032. I like to check that it's going to actually go in before I start adding glue. This looks like it could use a little bit more chamfer on the edge. Okay, that should go in okay. I'm not going to glue it in yet because I want to do the other lines so I don't have to deal with raised uh, inlay getting in the way of my scoring. So that's it. Um, I find that this method actually works quite well in the middle of the field compared to the um, Steve Latta type blade, um, but this is uh, produces a wider cleaner cut than this does. Um, it is easier to get off your mark using this compared to something that you can see and just run up against a straight edge. This is a pizza peel where I used the Steve Latta blade. I sand it down to the final shape, giving it a gradual sloped edge. A random orbital sander is perfect when the grain runs in so many different directions. Sanding brings the string and lay flush with the surface. The pizza peel gets a finish of food safe drugstore mineral oil to bring out the beauty of the wood. The tray done with the Veritas tools was a softer spalted maple and perhaps is not the best choice for doing cross grain string inlay. It gets a coat of poly.
If you found this introduction to string inlay jigs and tools helpful, please like and subscribe as it will help others to find this video. Feel free to leave your comments below.